these are a great budget DMU model that will grace any layout. It's a DMU that's not available in any other form from any other manufacturer. So if you want a 110, it's a great model which still does hold its own considering the age of the tooling. A big hello to you. It is so great to see you as always and I really do hope that you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk and I'm welcoming you up here to Weir Yard because quite frankly we need to talk about the hobby and it's one particular area of the hobby that does feel rather neglected. There very much does seem to have been a race to the top with most manufacturers striving to make ever greater advances in what they can deliver in model form and that's not in itself a bad thing as we get extra functionality, finer detail, more detail and some absolutely superb paint finishes. But there's a sector of our hobby that does feel like it's being left behind by all of that. There's three main areas that I've identified and these include newcomers to the hobby, often younger people with not that much money to spare. And really, how difficult is it for somebody who's not even reached the age of 10 to be able to nurture an interest in this amazing hobby that is the best hobby in the world if they just can't get together the money to buy those high fidelity models? And also, there's the people who just don't have the money to spare, but it doesn't remove their enjoyment of the hobby. Where are the budget models for them? And finally, there's the people who maybe don't want all that fidelity because their plan is to get the enjoyment in this hobby from upgrading what is available at a budget level price. And for me, there's one manufacturer that hasn't lost sight of its roots and is still catering for these areas of the hobby. And that's Hornby with their Railroad Plus range. Now we've talked a little bit about these before. In fact, we've reviewed several of the models, the Class 67, the 37 and the 31 as well. And they've all done pretty well because the Railroad Plus range includes an enhanced livery application. And that does quite a bit of heavy lifting. Even on an older model, an enhanced livery application does work wonders to bring out the detail that maybe just wasn't able to be realized in the paint finish with the methods that were used in construction back in the 1980s and 90s when these tools were new. We've moved on from transfers and spray painting with basic masks and now we've got some really quite complex photorealistic images possible to be printed to the side of models. We've got tampo printing that gives some really straight and true finishes and we've got multiple passes of the different inks to be able to give us a livery that just wouldn't have been possible when some of these older models were new. And Hornby is keeping these sectors of the hobby alive by releasing these Railroad Plus models and it's the Class 110 that is the latest of these to be released. Available in a two-car blue-grey Metro Trains liveried version or a three-car version in BR Green, these are a great budget DMU model that will grace any layout from those on a limited budget or maybe those who are very, very young and perhaps you don't want them to be handling some very delicate models. Well, these are the models for you. And they form the basis of some upgrade projects that can be quite satisfying to take a fairly basic level model and elevate it right up. You know, how we used to do things back in the 80s when models were a little bit more toy-like. Well, these aren't toy-like. They've got a great improved livery application, but they certainly are servicing those important sectors of our hobby that are neglected by some of the other manufacturers. And thanks to the generosity of Hornby who've sent over a review sample for us to take a good close look at, you can come with me and I'll show you just what the Railroad Plus Class 110 can give for your collection. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. 
You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. Now I have to say over the years I've become a bigger and bigger convert to the Railroad Plus range of models giving great value for money for maybe those on a tighter budget. And if you really do like the models that we're going to be featuring in today's video, we do have a link down below. It's an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra if you follow it and buy the models. And certainly we think they are at the end of that link at the probably about the keenest price that there is out there. But it does help the channel. What also helps is hitting the like button, sharing this video and subscribing if you've not already done so. So do please consider doing that. But today, Let's take a look at that Class 110 from Hornby and see if it's something that maybe you should be paying closer attention to. For me, Railroad Plus is something that I'm a huge fan of. It takes older models, often which the tooling's been either superseded or is considered a little bit out of date, and it gives them primarily an enhanced livery application. And believe me, that does a lot of heavy lifting to make these models look something special. But more importantly, they also keep the prices down. And in this day and age, price is always the topic that just keeps on giving. People are always talking about how expensive models are getting. And the Railroad Plus range is a concerted effort by Hornby to keep railway modelling affordable. And that is the only way that we're going to get new, younger modellers into the hobby who can still then afford models on pocket money prices that they can save up up with birthday and Christmas money and actually be able to get them all on their own. The models too are also generally more robust and that means you can be happier giving these to a younger modeler without worrying too much about lots of high fidelity detail that can easily get damaged with handling. On the channel, we've done a number of different Railroad Plus reviews, including the Class 67, 37, and most recently, the Class 31. And all of these have really looked good in that enhanced livery option. They also generally get a few other upgrades too. So in all cases, we get a DCC ready model with an eight pin interface. And on some of them, we get improved couplings with uh, slimline tension locks in NEM pockets and some other minor upgrades as well. The latest release is this Class 110, which Hornby have brought out as a three-car unit in BR Green and this two-car unit in Blue Grey. And Hornby have very kindly sent this over for us to take a good close look on the channel. Looking to the end of the box, we've got the Railroad Plus Enhanced Livery Branding. And this particular one is catalogue number R30171 in Metro Train Livery, the Class 110 two car DMU train pack and you can see there DCC ready and minimum radius I think that's radius two although by and large I found that actually a lot of these do get round radius one at a pinch the box is pretty easy to get into and uh, I do quite like the way that Hornby have gone with the packaging for these Gone is the polystyrene and plastic trays and instead what we've got is this pressed shaped cardboard and I think it's really nice. Uh, we're thinking about the environment, there's still a bit of plastic but a lot of the plastic and the, especially the polystyrene has gone and this is all fully recyclable uh, which I really do approve of. I'm not really a one for uh, endorsing huge amounts of uh, waste uh, materials being sent to landfill. 
We also get some spare traction tyres now. I know what you're thinking, but this model does have traction tyres, and it's something that Railroad Plus models do tend to have. They are older models, and it does massively improve the grip and traction. Now, you can remove them if you really want, but just be aware that it might compromise the running of the model, and the fact that they give you a couple of spares is quite handy. And for a younger modeler, to be honest, that's absolutely fine. We also get a set of couplings for either end of this unit. Now, unlike the uh, Class 31 that we had uh, in for review, um, we don't have NEM pockets on these, so we do get these older style huge couplings, but actually it should be fairly easy to upgrade these to slimline tension locks with some aftermarket parts. And that's one of the other good things about the Railroad Plus models. They also give you a great lower price starting point for doing some actual real modeling if you want to upgrade these. So for example, lighting is a first port of call. There's a lot of aftermarket stuff that can be used to add lighting into these, both on DC, but also DCC is where this really starts to give. We do have out of the box the eight pin decoder socket in here, and that does mean that natively we can support three different auxiliary functions from that DCC decoder with more if necessary if you're prepared to do a little bit more work and that essentially means you could add directional lighting but do bear in mind that there's no power feed through to the uh, second coach or if you've got the three car unit into the two other coaches so you'll either have to have lighting that's always on or have DCC decoders to control the lighting in those. First impressions out of the box are fairly good actually. The motor unit is not as heavy as we've become used to, but certainly the first impressions of this livery is that the application really is quite good. Bringing it in close to the camera, you can see we've got the Metro Train branding, and this is where we start to see some of that enhanced livery. The demarcation between the yellow front and the blue is nicely done, with the hinges on the door just protruding to the yellow section, which seems to look fairly reasonable. We've got the private branding there, really quite crisp and sharp, and even though these are moulded relief, they are picked out in silver, which does go a long way to improve things. The rest of this branding is crisp and sharp, and I particularly like that Metro Train logo, where we've got everything where it should be and no fuzziness to the white. You can see further enhancements in this livery, where we've got the grey and the white surround that crisply goes around it, and that is something that previously you might not have seen quite so many passes of the colour printing. On the windows too, you can see We've got these, um, I think these are no smoking, yeah, I can just make out, these are no smoking on the windows and that again is really crisply done. We've then also got some of the detail which is moulded as part of the glazing, picked out in the silver and that too is further enhancements that really does go a long way to improve the look of this model. All of this detail on the side is moulded. And again, we've got further passes with the silver, and this glazing does seem to be fairly nicely pushed in there. It's a push fit from the back. It goes right into the recess and doesn't look too prismatic at the edges either. It also shows that we've got a full interior. It is quite a basic plastic moulding, but certainly, again, it forms the basis for a little bit of modelling. You can get your Humbrol paints out and do a little bit of work to spruce up that inside, add in extra passengers, and really there's a lot of opportunity for detailing this up. Looking to the underside, this is all a one-piece moulding. But there is a lot of relief detail on this. You can see the radiators, the battery boxes, and some of the engine in there as well. And whilst this is a one-piece moulding, on the other side we do have the exhaust as a separate piece finished in silver. And what I would suggest is a very light addition of weathering on these would go a long, long way. Certainly some of the Humbrol weathering powders are a great place to start experimenting. And remember, less is more. Just a little bit of frame dirt would really bring out some of this detail and quickly start to show off this and really make a massive 
massive improvement to the model. You can also get your paints out and there's a few bits and pieces in there I can see which could be enhanced with very careful addition of some paint enhancements. So there's a lot going on and a lot that you can do. The running number E52075 is nicely yet yeah, realized on the side. And then we've got these bogies with metal wheels. These are uh, quite large treads. Again, something I would suggest doing is perhaps with some matte black, Humbrol number 33 in the enamel range, would really just tone down some of the metallic edge on those wheels. And again, an application of some weathering powders would go a long way on these to both bring out the detail and just tone everything down just a little bit. The buffers on the end are not sprung. You wouldn't expect that on a railroad or a railroad plus model, but actually they're not too bad. We've got uh, no molding marks across the heads and they do seem pretty robust. Again, there's plenty of option there for a little bit of uh, user upgrades. We've got non-working lights on the front and the actual front face of the 110 units is captured really well. It's a DMU that's not available in any other form from any other manufacturer. So if you want a 110, and these were certainly a uh, very prominent unit back in the days of British Railways, then this is your port of call. We've got the overhead warning flash really quite crisply printed there just on the window. And this includes a fixed destination to Sheffield on the motor end. Again, really crisply done. And then we've got this head code pod. And looking across the roof, it is a little bit simple, but definitely we've got uh, options here for adding a little bit of weathering. And the roof is somewhere where you can add quite a lot in. And I would suggest that around the exhaust stacks, a little bit of soot. And then you can also put a little bit of grime into the roof, run it down as if it's been streaked by rain. And there's a lot of mileage in improvements to this. On the back of the driving unit, we've got another overhead warning flash, really quite crisp, separately fitted exhaust stacks, and these go up either side of the corridor connection. We've also got these windows into the vestibule, and we've got the top's data plate, which really is quite crisp and really nicely done. Another example of this enhanced livery. In between the two different uh, parts of this, we do have factory fitted these quite large uh, tension lock couplings and these are probably perfectly okay for this application but there is scope to replace these should you so wish though be noted that these are actually riveted in place in this location on the model. The model is powered by a single motor bogey which is actually quite nicely hidden inside the guards compartment so it's not too obtrusive although if you really go looking for it you can see it. This drives to all four of the wheels on this bogey with traction tyres on one side of each of the wheels. What's interesting is that we also get brake shoes that line up with the wheels. And this is something that you might not normally expect, but it's nice to see. And certainly it goes a long way to make these bogies look proper and as they should be. Does your home insurance cover your model railway collection? There can be certain conditions or limitations attached to your policy which could leave your collection uninsured or with very limited cover from all kinds of risks. For example, many home policies only provide very limited cover for contents kept in garages or other outbuildings and some will only cover for collections up to a limited value. Magnet Insurance are here to help give you that peace of mind, making sure that you don't get caught out. Our specialist policies are flexible and we can work with you to make sure that your collection is correctly covered and answer any questions that you have. Put your mind at ease by giving us a call on 01636 858 249 or visit our website for a quotation at www.modelrailwayinsurance.co.uk Turning to the trailing car, again we've got some different detail differences here. This is not just a duplicate of that first car you can see. We don't have the guard's compartment and certainly again we've got a wealth of extra livery enhancements including some of the no smoking lozenges. And then we've also got that interior, which is quite visible inside there. And I do love the thoughtfulness that just a little bit of paint brings out these window ventilators. And we've got some in the open position 
and others in the closed position just to give us that little bit of variety. This unit also features the exhaust stacks and that uh, really quite nice tops panel too. Overhead warning flashes. A lot of the rest of the detail is molded on, but actually it's not too badly done. And we've got uh, a slightly different roof layout on this as well. Again, as per the prototype. At the cab end too, we've got leads this time already fitted. It is really nice and crisp. The windscreen wipers are not picked out though, and that is one area where I think Hornby have missed a trick. These could easily have been enhanced with a very, very light uh, dusting in the silver pass that they've done on the sides here, and would have really brought out that extra detail, but it, it's not really a huge issue. On this, we've got again, same pattern metal wheels. These are fairly free running, but there appears to be no pickups whatsoever, so if you want to fit internal lighting, you will need to add your own pickups into this. But we do have a nice clear interior with that fully modelled interior seating, which would benefit from a little bit of extra paintwork. On the underside, again, it's all moulded as one, but we do have this additional silver exhaust on the side. And once more, a little go over with weathering powders from the Humbrol range really will bring this out. Just a quick note on the couplings, if you wish to add, uh, say, two class 110s together, we do have a mounting point on the bogey for the extra couplings, and these are provided in that extra bag. These are the same fat style ones, but it is quite possible to make use of the nuts and bolts that come with these to fasten them to uh, actually fasten in aftermarket slimline tension locks. And I would suggest that if you're not planning on coupling this to anything, just dispense with these entirely, or if you do wish to couple it to something else, then do consider the slimline tension locks as they do go a long way for enhancing the look of the model. On DC, the model performed really well. It was a good smooth runner out of the box with a realistic top speed and some quite good control on my Gage Master Model D controller. There's no additional lights, but it does pick up from both the motor bogey and the non-motor bogey on the uh, driving car. And that means that you do get some really good smooth running, even over insel frog points. Because it's got such a broad wheelbase, it doesn't seem phased by these at all. When it comes to DCC, I'm going to be fitting an 8-pin Trainomatic decoder and this fits into the socket that is found in that motor car. Unfortunately, I do believe that these models date from a time where Hornby didn't really expect anybody to need to gain access to them. They've now been made DCC ready, so it's much more likely that a user does need to get into them. And because of the design, this is something that really is a little bit trickier than it needs to be. I understand that they wouldn't want to completely redesign the model, as this is, after all, in the budget range, but it is an area where I've run into some difficulties just trying to get inside. There's no screws. It's just simply a case of getting a fingernail under the side of the model. And this is where it can get just a little bit tricky. The model is held together by the glazing, and when you move the body sides apart to unclip the glazing, what actually happens is the glazing stays clipped in and ends up sliding down and getting jammed. So at this stage, I'm gonna use a very small screwdriver and just unclip that glazing once you've finally managed to free off those clips, I will show you what exactly is holding them in. You'll see we've got some clips just down the side of the unit, and these marry up with these plastic protrusions out from the glazing, and that's where a lot of the problem creeps in. As you can see, this often causes the glazing to come free. It's not actually glued into the model particularly, so it's a little bit of a stubborn area. You just have to be quite careful. And when you come to reassemble, 
just uh, squeeze the glazing back into place. Inside though we can see the plastic representation of the internals and this would be a good time to do a little bit of customization. It's something that you can do with these models without worrying too much about uh, running the risk of ruining something expensive. You could imagine spending a couple of hours with a variety of different paint colours. You could do the floor in one colour, the seats in another, the walls as per the prototype, and you could also do the full driver's cab, picking out all of this relief detail, adding a driver, adding passengers, and very quickly you can see that this model would become something quite special, and it's a great modelling project that afterwards you can look at it and feel proud with what you've achieved. The 8-pin socket can be found in the chassis. We've got some weight in here, which is actually a reasonable amount with the traction tyres. This doesn't seem to be too bad a performer. You can see the wiring across the bottom, and there's plenty of space down here to put the decoder without impinging into the internal compartment of the model. If you want to add sound, the HM7000 series of decoders will fit into this. There is space to be able to get your speakers down underneath the floor. And there is also a forthcoming first generation DMU sound profile for these HM7000 decoders in the form of the Class 121 bubble car. And this would be a good close approximation to be suitable to add sound to the Class 110. Fitting the decoder is quite easy. Just rock the blanking plate backwards and forwards, slowly working it out. And then you can see just there we have that pin is designated as pin 1. What I like about the board that Hornby use is we've got little solder tabs on the board which does mean that if you want to add lighting into this unit it's really easy to just solder to these solder tabs and you've got instant connection to your DCC decoder giving you three auxiliary functions without needing to do any difficult wiring. Orange is your pin 1 so line this up very carefully, make sure all the pins are in place. Don't force these in, you will just damage the pins on the decoder. And a little bit of firm pressure and manipulation may be necessary. If there's plenty of room alongside, just tuck this in. Give the extra wires a twist, get them in underneath. And then what I would recommend is just test this on the DCC programming track before you put the body on. Given the nature of the clips on the body, it's as well to make sure everything works as you want before you reassemble it. If you want to add some extra customization to your model in terms of painting up the seats, adding passengers, that should be done now as well. So you only need to take the body off once. Once you're happy with how it performs, then you can start to put the body back on. With the body off though, I will show you that the motor bogey does appear to have been upgraded from how this model originally appeared when it was first introduced into the range way back in, I think this is from the 1980s at the very least. This is a much more reliable motor bogey and certainly performs a lot smoother and a lot less noisily than its predecessor ever did. And to get the body back on, make sure that you align the motor bogey correctly. Get the motor bogey end clipped in first. There's just a little lug on this end that goes in and makes contact. And then work the rest of the body back into place. One thing I would suggest is very carefully you might need to prise the body up and over this end piece on there and then it should just slip down into place. And then once you're happy just a quick check and then we can get this on the track and up and running. On the tracks of Weir Yard, the unit performed well. It does have those traction tyres and they can be a little bit of an off-putting thing for some people. 
But with this unit out of the box, there's not a huge amount of weight to it, and it really does need those traction tyres to put in the performance that it did. Without them, I suspect it really would struggle, because the unit is quite light. The other area of struggling did seem to be over insole frog points, and it was always when the motor bogey reached the point that it tended to, at very low speeds, just splutter and sometimes stall out. Pressing down on the unit at the other end, very quickly got it to pick up and carry away, and I deduced from this that there isn't a lot of weight over the other bogey that has pickups, and this could easily be rectified, maybe by cutting up some offcuts of lead flashing, or maybe even just uh, putting in and gluing in some steel washers just to bring up the adhesive weight, and it would improve the performance enormously. Over the rest of the point work, it did make it through just fine. There was no signs of derailing, and it did take in the twist and turns, including the torture test track, with the greatest of ease. It did feel, though, a little bit jerky at low speed, and it wasn't too bad. Certainly, I've seen other models that were a lot worse, but it is something that I did note in the review. All in all, though, for a Class 110, this is definitely a reasonable model, and it's coming in at quite a reasonable price point as well. The RRP for this two-car blue-grey unit is £149.99, and the three-car unit is coming in at £199.99 RRP, and that's in the plain BR green. That's certainly a lot less expensive than what we're becoming used to seeing these multiple car units retail for, and with retailer discounts, that will bring these down even further. It certainly puts them in the price range of those that have a very, very restricted budget. And with Hornby really being the only player in town producing locomotives for the lower end of the market, it really does have to be applauded. It's a great model which still does hold its own considering the age of the tooling. It might not match up to the high fidelity models that are coming through now, but the price point really does forgive a lot. And there's certainly a huge amount of room for improvements with this model that the user can easily undertake. From a light brush over of brake dust weathering to bring out the detail on this underframe, through to adding lighting within, painting the interior just to get rid of some of that shiny blue plastic, and uh, adding in maybe some figures too. And this could very quickly, very easily, and without a great deal of outlay, quickly become a really quite eye-catching piece in your collection. So now we come to the scores. First up is build quality, and I have to say that it is quite a nice simple construction. There's not a huge amount of separately applied detail, but those that are here do add to the model. There does feel to be a lack of adhesive weight, and that does show itself with slow speed running, but it's something that the end modeler can rectify fairly readily. The wheels would also be improved by a quick uh, paint over with Humbrol number 33 in the enamel range, and the black would certainly tone down these wheels, which do have a somewhat wide tread to them, which detracts slightly in this shiny appearance. The windows do flush fit, they're quite a crafty construction pushed through from the other side, but I did find that they had a habit of easily being able to be pushed back into the interior, and certainly when trying to get the body off, they really did tend to pop out and jam, making that job a little bit harder than it needed to be. The interior has a one-piece blue plastic moulding, which is actually quite reasonable. There's no additional colour passes on that, and what you get is the base plastic colour. But again, it's a great starting point for the user to be able to customise this model. It is quite robust, and that motor bogey does provide a reasonable amount of power. And the grip, whilst compromised by the lack of weight, is improved by those traction tyres, although staggering these one side to the other would have helped, perhaps, with some of the pickup issues. 
The couplings are these fat tension locks, and I can't help but feel that these might have been an area for a degree of improvement, as we've seen on some of the other Railroad Plus models, with a narrower format tension lock at the very least. Although, out of the factory, they don't fit the uh, front and rearmost couplings, and actually, this is a plus point for me, because they would look quite ugly, and for most users, they'd be running this model as just the two-car unit. They are in the box for the user to fit themselves, and the nut and bolt construction of that is pretty good, because it does give some degree of flexibility. I did find that some of the fit between the body and the chassis was a little bit springy, and there didn't seem to be any way of addressing this. It really is down to the clip together finish of the model. It is a good budget model with tooling that harks back to an earlier time, but it does still pull its weight, and I'm going to give this a 6.5. On running quality, it was surprisingly good. Again, that improved build of the motor bogey does provide a reasonably smooth performance, certainly far better than I remember these models being back in the day when the tooling was new. It is hampered a little bit by those traction tyres, and they would have been better staggered just for a slightly better pickup, and a little bit of extra weight over the other end would have helped with the pickups from that bogey. But all in all, it did perform reasonably well on Weir Yard. It took in all of the areas of track with no sign of derailing, and with that extra weight, that would have gone a long way to remove any issues that we did have. So I'm going to give this an 8.7. On DCC fitting and innovation, this is an area where it felt like it was a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. On paper, the body just unclips in six places and lifts off. But the reality of this was certainly on this model, was that the clips are part of the glazing. And the glazing is such that it very quickly just pops out, leaving you in a half and half situation with the windows jammed inside. And you have to go in with something like a very, very small screwdriver to very carefully jimmy them loose. Once you do get inside, though, there is a lot of room. The DCC socket is thoughtfully placed underneath the seating, so there's no need to actually intrude on the inner passenger space when doing the DCC fit. I also like the circuit board that the socket is attached to. With the solder tabs for all eight of the pins visible, it makes it incredibly easy for any user that wants to do a lighting upgrade on this model, because they have got a simple place that they can solder the wires to unobtrusively. There's also plenty of space if you want to add a stay alive, and that is something that would improve that slightly hesitant running when running over insul frog points at low speeds. There's also plenty of space for sound fitting this model if you wish to, and I could see no issues with the HM7000 fitting into this along with its speaker setup too, without any visible signs of that protruding into the compartment above. All in all, though, it did seem to be marred by that difficulty in getting the body off, and I feel that that's probably because this model was designed in an age when DCC was just not a thing in existence, so it wasn't really expected that the end user would spend a lot of time needing to get the body off. Fast forward to a time we have a DCC socket, and it becomes just a little bit of a hindrance. So I'm going to give this 7.1. On accuracy and quality of finish, well, as a class 110, it really does look the part. It's quite a distinctive looking unit, and certainly the uh, representation here is reasonably well done within the budget parameters. There's a lot of relief detail, even though this below Solbar level is a one-piece moulding, I could really see a lot of this crisp detail coming through to the fore 
with a little bit of time on careful touching up with a series of paints for the various pipes and such like, as well as a dusting over of weathering. It is something that would give quite a pleasant couple of evenings project for the average modeler, and it's a great starting point for the younger modeler who might be frightened about doing some mischief to a very expensive and very complicated model. With this, you don't have to worry quite so much, and there's no real loose detail that's at risk of being broken by unsympathetic handling. The Railroad Plus paint finish is really as you would expect, enhanced, and what you get is really nice and sharp. The demarcation between the yellow and the blue seems pretty reasonable, and particularly the demarcation with the white line between the grey and the blue for the uh, grey top portion is really well done. And I really like the picking out in silver of the roof ventilators, which really does bring the detail forward. We've also got these no smoking stickers on the windows, and those are particularly well done. Other highlights include the overhead warning flashes and the tops data panels on the two parts of the Class 110. All in all, it's a really solid model for the Railroad Plus range, and I'm going to give it a 7.1. On value for money, this is where the Railroad Plus range really does score well. It brings older tooling that's either been superseded in the range by newer models, or that has perhaps passed its prime. It gives it that extra lease of life, and in doing so, it provides more budgetary conscious models, not just for the younger modeler or those on a limited budget, but maybe is a great starting point for the modeler that wants to branch out into detailing and improving their models, but maybe is just a little bit scared about doing that with a very expensive premium model. At the price point of $149.99 for the two-car unit and $199.99 for the three-car unit in green, this is a pretty respectable model at a respectable price. And with shop discounts, that's likely to drop even further. And I'm going to give this a 9.2, giving us a full overall score of 38.6. It's another great release in the Railroad Plus range, and far from having scrapped the tooling, as perhaps some people who are obsessed with high fidelity and rivets might have clamoured for, this gives a new lease of life to an old classic, and provides a lifeline to people who, for whatever reason, either want a much cheaper model and don't care as much for the fidelity, or want a model that they can safely upgrade without feeling like they run the risk of destroying something that they've paid a lot of money for. I well, hope you found today's video enjoyable and informative as well, and we've got that link down below to help you find the models featured today. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What are your thoughts about this Railroad Plus range? Class 110, but maybe as well. Any of the others? Are there some favourites for you? Or maybe there's some clangers, I don't know. I'd always love to hear from you, and it's a great way of sharing your experience with your fellow modelers. And uh, don't forget to check us out over on Patreon. We've got our full merch store down below. And until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying like, share, and subscribe. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. Does your home insurance cover your model railway collection? There can be certain conditions or limitations attached to your policy which could leave your collection uninsured or with very limited cover from all kinds of risks. For example, many home policies only provide very limited cover for contents kept in garages or other outbuildings and some will only cover for collections up to a limited value. 
Magnet Insurance are here to help give you that peace of mind, making sure that you don't get caught out. Our specialist policies are flexible and we can work with you to make sure that your collection is correctly covered and answer any questions that you have. Put your mind at ease by giving us a call on 01636 858 249 or visit our website for a quotation at www.modelrailwayinsurance.co.uk. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.